Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry where we try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. We try to help you with your conversational English, business English, whatever it takes, whatever you need, whether it's expressions, phrasal verbs, idiomatic expressions, we're there to help you and if you need any help, you know where our teachers are, you can just contact me on www com. always happy to hear from you. So what have we got for you in this lesson? Well in this advanced English lesson we are looking at idioms and expressions to do with relax and relaxation, how to rest, rest and relaxation. So advanced English expressions and idioms connected with rest and relaxation. So we've got 12, okay, so plenty of ways in which you can relax and plenty of ways in which you can express it. So I'll go through them and then give you situations when you might use them. So to take it easy, well we can use that in lots and lots of ways. You might tell somebody that's what you're going to do for the weekend. Ah, I'm not going to get up too much, I'm just going to take it easy, I've been working hard recently. Or we might give somebody some advice. Why don't you take it easy for a couple of days? Just rest. You know, it's when somebody's complaining about they've, they've, they've had no holiday, everything is difficult. So you might just say, well, just take it easy. Take a couple of days off, you do them, why not? And just rest at home, take it easy. Next, to let your hair down. So this is one of these idiomatic expressions which sometimes needs a little bit of explaining, particularly if you've got a head of hair like mine or lack of hair like mine. So when you let your hair down, it's a metaphorical meaning, of course, but it means to really relax. And when you go to town, you you go to the the restaurant or you go to the bar, you go to the nightclub, you sing and dance the night away and you let your hair down and you come back the next day completely shattered, but you've really, really had a good time of it. Yes, yeah? so to let your hair down. So you often hear the expression, what are you guys getting up to? Ah, oh, we're going, the exams are over. We're just all going to get together, go to the nightclub, but we're really going to let our hair down. So don't expect to see me anytime soon hmm? to let your hair down. To switch off. Well, it's like switching the electric lights off, you know, you just power down, okay? So, oh, I'm looking forward to the holiday. We've got two weeks coming up. We're going off and assuming there's no problems with the flights. We're just going to switch off, lie on a beach, have plenty of swims, relaxation, get a bit of a tan, some nice local cuisine. Yeah, we're going to switch off. So to switch off means to forget about everything. Switch off from work switch off from the family, switch off from what other activities keep you busy, all the school runs and the helping with the homework and all those sort of issues. So the two weeks summer holiday, or if you're lucky, three weeks are really going to help you to switch off. Hang out with. So this is about doing something different. It's about resting and relaxing, relaxation. How did you spend the summer holidays? I, I I was hanging out with my friends most of the time. So what kids love to do during the summer holidays, they don't particularly want to go to school, but they don't want to lose touch with their friends. So if the friends are local or not so far away, then we'll, they will like, if they can, to hang out with them. And of course, in the modern world, they can hang out on the internet. They can hang out playing computer games. But, you know, they like to go to the park, kick a football, play tennis, go for a swim, go to the, the movies, have a pizza together. Yeah, they like to hang out with their friends, to be together. Sometimes not doing anything in particular, or sometimes just doing nothing. Oh, I was, we were in Charles's room at, at home and we were just hanging out listening to music. He had some good music, we downloaded some and we phoned in a pizza. We had a really good time to hang out with. Next, to unwind. Well, when we want to unwind, it means we might be feeling a little bit stressed. We might be feeling a little bit uptight. So when you unwind, you literally let yourself go. You try to completely relax. Some ways of unwinding could be to start the, the evening off with a nice massage. That's a good way to unwind. Or you might unwind sitting in front of the TV, watching a movie, having a glass of wine. That's a nice, comfortable way to unwind with your feet up. So there are many, many ways in which we can find to have rest and relaxation. And we generally classify it as unwinding. 
How did you unwind? Oh, it was wonderful. I went to that new spa just outside the town. I was there for a day. Wow, I could really unwind. Absolutely wonderful. Started off with a massage, then those seaweed baths. Oh, you really should try it, Kate. It's wonderful to unwind. To take your mind off something. Well, when you take your mind off something, if you want to forget about it. So let's go away for the weekend and take our minds off work. Let's go out for the evening, try that new restaurant and take your mind off all the problems with the kids, all about the school and about the points for university to take your mind off something. So it might only be for a few hours. It might be for a weekend. And if you're very, very lucky, it might be for a longer period of time over your summer holidays. But with whatever you do and whichever way you do it, you want to take your mind off something means to forget about it. Or if you can't deal with the problem, put it at the back of your mind and then you deal with it when you come back. The problem's still going to be there when you're finished with the holiday. But let's try and relax on the holiday and take your mind off things or take our minds off things. If you do like it, then please like the video. And if you can subscribe to the channel, I'd really, really appreciate it because it really helps. To slow down. Well, this is a good bit of advice that we could all take yeah to slow down why does everybody want to do things at 100 miles an hour why when they send you an email do they look for an answer immediately why when they send you a text on whatsapp they send you a message two minutes later did you get my text did you get this yeah so we just need to sit back take a deep breath Whew, yeah slow down the world is still there the, st the world is still going around it will always go around. So what we need to do is slow down a little bit. Take a step back and slow down. Good way to rest, good way for relaxing. That leads on to take a breather. Okay, so this is literally to take a breather is deep breaths, a breather. Okay, but if you've been working very hard or perhaps in a, some uh, sports activity, let's say you've been running on the treadmill in the gym and then you just stop after 20 minutes and say, oh, I think I'll take a breather, meaning I'll take a short break. Or you could be redecorating the room and after two hours you've been peeling wallpaper off the walls, the room is very hot and stuffy. You say, oh, I'm just going to step outside and take a breather for 10 minutes. I'll be back in no time at all. So to take a breather means to walk away from or stop what you're doing for a short period of time. It could be a very important marketing meeting in your office. And after about two hours, the boss says, okay, look, I think it's time we took a breather. Let's break for lunch. We'll come back here at 2.15 and we can pick up where we left off. So to take a breather, to rest and relax. You go out and you have that coffee. You sit down and do a little bit of thinking. Footloose and fancy free, an ideal idiomatic expression. Footloose and fancy free. So, what does it mean? Well, footloose means you really have no direction to go. Fancy free means, well, you've no ties, you've no obligations, so you can do what you really want. A good time to use this is when the kids have gone off for the summer to their grannies or they're gone for a couple of days or nights, and you can say to your partner, well, I'm footloose, or we are footloose and fancy free, so what we're going to do? Let's let our hair down and go to the city, or whatever you, you plan to do. But you don't have to worry about the kids, because they're away. You don't have to be back at midnight, because they are away. You don't have to be thinking about getting up at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning to prepare breakfast, because they're away. So you are really foot loose and fancy free, meaning no ties, no obligations. You are your own boss. You can do what you will with your time. You can do nothing or you can do lots of things, but you don't have to seek permission. You don't have to be rushing home because somebody else needs you. Foot loose and fancy free. To have a blast. Well, when we have a blast, it's we, we have a really good time. How was the party? Oh, we had an absolute blast. You know, it was really great to see all the old guys there. We haven't been together for, oh God, I, I've forgotten how long it, it is since we last met, but it's a long, long time. And you know, most of them haven't changed at all. A few with a few less hairs, some with 
a bit extra weight, but you know, they're the same old guys. So we had an absolute blast. Nah, nobody got really badly drunk. A few guys a little bit tipsy, but they really, really enjoyed themselves. We had a blast. So to have a blast is a good way to have rest and uh, recuperation or rest and relaxation because you get out of yourself, you get away from the humdrum of the normal life and you start talking to or interacting with people in this situation that you haven't seen for some time. So to have a blast. If you have something that isn't working correctly, for example, your mobile phone or something that requires power, you have to recharge the batteries. Okay? So you plug it in like your electric razor or the mobile phone, you plug it in and you recharge the batteries so you can use it for the next two, three or four days. Okay, So just like your mobile phone, just like your electric razor, you from time to time will need to recharge charge your batteries. So we use this expression when we feel it's time we had a rest and some relaxation. Well, I'm going to spend the next three or four days just recharging my batteries. Or I did nothing at the weekend but recharge my batteries. I got up late on Saturday morning. I went for a haircut, a massage. I even skipped the gym. I just said, right, this is it. I'm just going to put my feet up for the day, recharge my batteries, and see where it leads me. And I have to say, I had a really, really good time. By Sunday afternoon, well, I was getting a little bit itchy feet. So I went to the gym on Sunday afternoon and did a little bit of a workout, but nothing strenuous. So it was still part of my recharging the battery phase that I was going through. So to recharge your batteries, make yourself feel better, get yourself energized or re-energized for the next week. And then finally, to indulge yourself in something. Hmm really good way to rest and relax. I'm going to indulge myself in a bit of chocolate, okay? So I'm going to sit down in front of the TV, find that movie that I wanted to watch. I've got some chocolate and I'm going to indulge myself. I know I shouldn't, but it's dark chocolate, so probably not so bad anyway, so to indulge yourself. Or you could say to your partner, why don't we go away for the weekend, go to that hotel out in the country near the, the, the forest and indulge ourselves. I hear they've got a great spa. They've even got a golf course. You might fancy playing a bit of golf, but let's just indulge ourselves for a few days, make ourselves feel pampered, make ourselves feel special or really, really good so we can completely switch off. So all of these expressions, they're all related to you taking it easy, you taking some rest, you having some relaxation, and we all need them in this day and age. So let's go through them again. As I said, there are 12. Take it easy. Let your hair down. Switch off. Hang out with, hang out with your friends. Unwind, okay, make sure with that pronunciation. Unwind, unwind. To take your mind off something, to take your mind off something, to forget about it. To slow down, take it easy, slow down. Take a breather, <sighs> step out, you know, don't play the game all night. Foot loose and fancy free foot loose and fancy free. To have a blast, to recharge your batteries, and then finally to indulge yourself in something. Indulge yourself in something nice. All about relaxing and resting. So these are advanced English idioms and uh, expressions relating to rest and relaxation. So you won't remember them all. You never will. You have to practice some of them. See a few that you like, use them and come back and then use a few of the other ones. Don't try to remember them all at the same time. And if you need some additional help, you'll get me on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. Very happy to hear from you. Very happy when you can join us. This is Harry saying goodbye. Until next time, join me for the next lesson.